here's another podcast from the Pod Bros Network. Have you ever heard about a championship called a kumite? It's like the Super Bowl of martial arts. The winner is the ultimate warrior. I am that champion. Oh, cool. Tell me about it. Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of the Jean Pod Van Damcast. It is Jeff and John in studio, and today we are reviewing Bloodsport 3. But before we get to it, we need your help. That's right, folks. If you haven't done so already and you shop on Amazon, please bookmark our link. Just go to podrose.com, scroll down, hit that Amazon button. It does not cost you anything but it helps us with our rents, our hosting fees, our new equipment. We appreciate all those that have been using Amazon by using our link. We also have a t-shirt store. There's four designs up on there now. I know last week you probably heard there was three. Now there's four. There's not a there's not a splits yet. We're still working on getting that. There. It's getting there. But check out T T E E dot P U B slash L I C slash Podros. Yeah, I know that sounds a little bit complicated. I'll say it again. T E E dot P U B slash L I C slash Pod Bros. T Public Pod Bros. That's the way to remember it. We are also on Patreon.com slash Pod Bros, where you can find our ultimate super secret episode. I mean, this is almost invitation only. Yeah, when, very hush hush. When I say invitation, I only mean you have to pay us a dollar. <laughs> That's it, a dollar to join our secret kumite. So. <laughs> our dark kumite. So yeah, yeah, check that out. There's different tiers there for different levels. We appreciate those that already donate to us. And uh, what's the, oh, iTunes, iTunes, rate us five stars on your favorite podcatcher app, uh, specifically iTunes, leave us a review that helps us get into other Van Damme fans' ears. Man, this week uh, I found some fun stuff. I, I actually found out some, some new information Ooh. while I was going through my stuff. We we planned our episodes and whatnot for the this recording session, and... Um, let me just say first, Blackwater has a release date of June 29th, 2018. So as we record, next week is when Blackwater gets released in the U.S. Oh, hell yeah. They've already started dropping reviews for it, and... All super positive? Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> not at all. Uh, very unfortunate. I had to stop reading one because I didn't want to be spoiled on anything. Yeah, plus uh, you didn't want to have to... Uh go on a revenge spree for the reputation of Jean-Claude Van Damme. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I also noticed on IMDb when I was uh, looking through Van Damme's credits again, because that's what I like to do, they added a a new one to his name, but it was was that car commercial that we uh, talked about where, um, where Van Damme, like, meets up with the girls and those thugs come walking up and they're about to beat him up but then they see it's Van Damme and they pull out all their phones for a picture and then <laughs> oh, like the yeah. tune up car guy comes <laughs> it was for that but like when I was I was like what is this and I typed it in and figured it out but like their Facebook page has an interview with Van Damme for whatever reason I don't know why they have this <laughs> it's an interview with Van Damme for an Australian news channel. I don't know who, and it's really it's almost like E Entertainment Tonight. Like, oh, uh, okay. Van Dam, Jean Claude Van Dam's in the news today in Australia for uh, throwing a bit of a temper tantrum <laughs> after an interview, and it shows him like talking. And he's like, no, no, no. He's like, there are too many people. There, there are people behind the camera talking. There are people in my ear talking. The guys behind the camera are saying. Oh, you know, his makeup, he needs to put stuff on, you know, I like to be all natural, blah, blah, blah. And he's freaking out. And it's pretty funny. He's like, I want to come to Australia and talk to you. I get tired of answering the same questions. For 25 years, I answered the same questions. And he's like, I can't do it anymore. And he took off his stuff. And then it was kind of like, is this real or not? Like, is this, you know, all part of a joke? Uh, Apparently, he did a speaking tour in Australia, which I'm very, very jealous about. Yeah. The fact he did a speaking tour in Australia, and uh, we have yet to get one here in the States. I know. That was a couple years ago, too. So it's not like we're going to see this anytime soon. Sadness. Uh, Yeah. So, Van Damme, if you're listening, which we know you are, you egomaniac, (laughs) uh, we love you. 
please do a speaking tour in America and uh, have Detroit as one of your stops. Yes, let us interview you. We love you. Please. Please. I know. I think that's the holy grail, right? Yeah. Uh, do, we stop, a... <laughs> do we stop just doing the show after we get Van Dam to enter like an interview? Presumably, he'll probably hospitalize us with controlled kids. Uh, yeah, I think so, man. I think so. I hope so. Anyway, <laughs> uh, I w- I will gladly um take a Van Dam kick. I don't know if you'll gladly take one, but maybe you. Oh will. yeah, you, several. You... Yeah, I definitely. If I'm conscious. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I don't want to be kicked unconscious, but you know, I would love to get kicked by Van Dam. I'm not gonna lie. Hell yeah. Uh, so yeah, maybe maybe one day we'll I'll actually try a little bit harder to reach out to see <laughs> instead of just posting on his Facebook page. Oh, I love this love one. You. We did a review on yeah. it in this episode, and then having you know the bunch of fans like it, and then getting more Van Dam fans to listen to us. Yes, you guys are the best. Thank you so much. So I think that's that about wraps that up, man. Um, sorry, a little bit of Van Dam news there, though. I was pretty excited. Blackwater, <laughs> yeah. June 29th. Well, hopefully it gets here. I'm sure it's going to be video on demand, so even better. So be on the lookout for that. If that happens, who knows, man? We'll, we'll have to take a break from these sequels and get back into Blackwater. Yes, right back at it, baby. So it feels like it's like right now we're at our home away from home. I can't wait to go home with another mm-hmm. Van Dam film. So, yes, we are back. Bloodsport 3, this 1996, not rated, one hour and 31 minute action sport film in which it brings us back to the world of Alex Cardo. This time, he must battle in a fight to end all fights. The Kumite, (laughs) the most vicious warrior alive, Beast. He must not only battle for his own honor, but also avenge the death of Soon, his mentor, teacher, and spiritual father. Jeez, spoiler alert. I know, man. (laughs) When Soon is spitefully killed by crime boss Du... What, what did they call him? Duvalet? I can't remember. I just kept thinking it was Gimli. I know. Me too. Me too. Spoiler a little bit about who played him. <laughs> In order to defeat Beast, destroy du- Duvalier, and I avenge Soon's it. death, Alex turns to l- 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 Long... To... <laughs> I thought they called him like Mokado or something. They did. It was I... like Master Mokado, Yeah, right? that's what I thought too. Alex turns to Luong, Luong, to whom he was indebted, and in, oh, Pat Morita. Yeah, that's who. It was. Okay. He makes a three-minute cameo in this. How the fuck do you get that from like? <laughs> oh my, I'm sorry, I'm getting angry at this one. Okay, um, let's throw all the fucking spoilers right into this little little synopsis yeah. of it, and then let's make people that weren't in it for that long seem, seem more, more important major, yeah. than they were. All right, so uh, sorry, I'm calling you out. T. Kroll at chs.cusd.claremont.edu <laughs> using your edu, your your educational email. Tisk tisk. Yep. Shame on you. Especially since you're spreading misinformation. Yeah, man. Long directs him to the great shaman Mikado, the judge to whom Alex must turn for guidance. The judge teaches him to fully channel the energy in his mind and body in order to route the beast in the kumite. Didn't he already know how to do that beforehand? Yeah, man. That's, uh, yeah, I uh, we'll get into this too. <laughs> so now I got to read Power Man Dan's. Ooh, is that like the drummer from Power Man Five Thousand? Oh, I hope so. <laughs> That'd be sweet. A little while after winning the Kumite, Alex Cardo, now an art dealer, no longer wishes to fight in tournaments. After Alex rejects millionaire Jacques Duvalet, the French Scotsman. Yeah, uh, Duvalet's uh, invitation to a new Kumite he is sponsoring. Duvalet has Alex's spiritual father son executed. Feeling empty inside and wanting revenge, Alex is directed by David Lung, Pat Morita, to master Mikado, the judge, son's brother who Alex met in the previous Kumite. Mikado helps Alex rebuild his, himself and teaches him things to build on what he learned from son. Alex finally decides to compete to avenge son's murder and honor his memory. All of Alex's wrath and fight abilities may not be enough to stop Duvalet's evil henchman, Beast, the biggest, strongest, and most powerful fighter the Kumite has ever seen. That was a much better That was a much synopsis. better. I, I still don't think it's the best, but no. you know, that was a lot better. I mean, he I still mean, did spoil things, though, yeah, too. he did. I guess it wasn't that big of a spoiler because it happens... It happens like in the middle of the movie. Was it? I yeah. thought it was like a half an hour in. Well, the movie's only an hour and a half long. Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> so, yeah it's yeah, it's, 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 it's pretty in far there. into the movie. Yeah. Enough to where it would be considered spoiler territory. Yeah. Like it's I not agree. like it happens in the beginning. Which I mean, if you wanted to argue, it probably could have happened in the beginning, and it really wouldn't have changed the tone of the movie, though. That's true too. All right. So we have Daniel Bernhardt reprising his role as Alex Cardo. 
John Reese Davies, uh, you might know this beautiful man <laughs> for all his work as Gimli in The Lord of the Rings. He was also in Indiana Jones. Yep. He's amazing in that, too. He is still doing a ton of stuff now. I mean. Oh, yeah. He was it, in Scanners. Yeah, dude. He's showing. Uh, he's got so many credits to his name in 2018. He's amazing, too. Yeah, he's still going, man. Still, still, like. Still as Scottish as fuck. Yep. Yep. I love hearing when he was talking about Gimli, like in a Scottish <laughs> yeah. accent and whatnot. <laughs> Let's see, The Adventures of Puss in Boots, the TV series. <laughs> it's funny when you have to soften your Scottish accent in order to play a dwarf. <laughs> <laughs> Could you soften the accent a little bit? <laughs> oh, man, he was in Once Upon a Time, the TV series. I'm trying to see stuff that people would actually know. Scooby-Doo Adventures, the mystery map. He played Gnarly Beard. <laughs> I kind of want to see that. I know, me too, man. He must be... I. He must be making a ton of money. I hope so. Well, for the Lord of the Rings alone, I should. Oh, I know. Like, you would think that he wouldn't have to uh, work ever again in his life. I yeah. think he just does it for the love of it. Oh, no way. Understandable. He was in the name of the king of Dungeon Siege. Yes. Oh, dude. Oh, we... oh. I did not even know that. Oh, we need to find make... an excuse to review that now. Yeah, dude. I Well, uh, oh, no. I was going to The sequel has Dolph Lundgren in it. Hmm. So maybe that's how we hop, skip, and jump. Yeah, we'll find a way. <laughs> we'll find a way. <laughs> okay, I'll I'll stop there. You you know him. He's been in like everything. Amber Keller Andrews played Crystal Duvalet, who was what we thought would be the love interest. Nope, she's uh, just some lady. No, she's just the daughter. <laughs> yeah. She's the daughter of the rich bad guy who happens to be attracted to uh, Alex Cardo. Yep. She only has 16 credits to her name. Uh, still doing stuff in 2013. Ooh, she was in Baywatch. I just watched the hey, Baywatch movie actually the today. The new one. The new one with the Rock. How was it? Uh, it was like I mean, do not expect going in to uh, see like a masterpiece of a film. It's what? goofy. <laughs> yeah. Huh? What? Is it kind of like? Did they give it like the 21 Jump Street yeah, treatment? Yeah. Where? Yeah. Yeah. Very little resemblance. Yeah, to the show. Yeah. Yeah, it's very comedic-driven. Um, they say fuck a lot in it, which was really surprising. Huh. Uh, but still, I I had a good time watching it. It was like, I mean, it wasn't so sophomoric in the humor, mm-hmm. but it was, well, it was you know, goofy. So I enjoyed it. it you know, if f- you liked the start, like Starsky and Hutch, you yeah. know, the remake. And I actually like did said, enjoy that. 21 Jump Street, if you liked that, I think you'd like Baywatch. Well, I mean, it's I... not like they're, you know, ruining a classic or anything. <laughs> right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I watched... I watched the fuck out of Baywatch when... uh Oh, yeah, man, back in the day. Yeah. <laughs> we used to do a Baywatch cast. Hell, yeah. Oh, <laughs> right. we could tie in with the uh, accidental wrestling fan when yeah, uh, the Hulk Thunder Hogan... Of Paradise. And, uh, yeah, the Paradise. Hell, yes. The Dungeon of Definitely. Doom showed up. Yeah, with our... Uh, she's our USA Network cast. <laughs> yes. She was in Nash Bridges, uh, which is we're going to have to just do a Nash Bridges cast, too. I think so. The Jeff Foxworthy Show, Married with Children as woman number two, Melrose Place as Renee for one episode, uh, Marilyn and Bobby, her final affair as Paulette, Silk Stockings, there's another one. Yes, another Jeez, USA man. time. Yep. Chloe Wells uh, for one episode, Herman's Head, Human Target, Round Trip to Heaven, Wings, oh man, as woman, one episode, <laughs> and Baby Talk. Another USA tie in there with yeah. Wings. Yeah, that's exactly... <laughs> Uh, Uni Park played Sherry. She was known for The Art of War as Tina Chan, Kim's Convenience as Mrs. Park, The Provocator as Suki's mother, Orphan Black as Maggie Chen. Hmm. Oh, she was Grace in the Tremors. Uh, is this the TV show? It's the TV show, yeah. The one that, that hasn't got been canceled. released, yeah. yeah. Isn't it still getting I released or something? I hope it is, man. I hope, like... The trailer's out. The, tra- the trailer is out. Like, uh, I heard the fans gave it a lot of backlash for them, you know, canceling it before it aired. Well, yeah. So, <laughs> I, You know what's great about Bloodsport 3 is that we got some reprisals, actually. Like, James mm-hmm. Hong repli- reprises Master Soon. Yes. Pat Morita rep- reprises David Long. I mean, like, that right there... Even though they're hardly in it for, uh, you know, they're yeah. basically in it both for like three minutes each. It's a nice touch, though. It's nice. It's nice that they had them. Like even actually... if it kind of messes with the timeline a little bit. Yeah. Of the uh, with the first one, it Dude. ending with like a 
montage, you know, a flashback of, yeah, yeah. you know, when he has like a long wispy beard and yeah, he has yeah. the dojo. I guess that was before the aforementioned uh, death part. Oh my gosh, man! Okay, kind of so. have some like Fast and Furious uh, timeline yeah, stuff yeah, going dude, on yes, there. Yeah, exactly. Okay, Nicholas R. Olison played the Beast. He, wow, I didn't look. He played the huge Aryan in uh, American <laughs> History X. <laughs> like, and he wore the same outfit yeah, when he man. played the Beast. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Why are the only guy fighting steel-toed boots? I just, that's what I was wondering too. <laughs> Ooh, he was in Fists of Iron as the muscle head. Makes sense. You know, I thought he was in a lot more stuff than this. He just, he, be, oh, Baywatch. The show or the? Yeah, no, the show. Cheers, Married with Children. All right. Well, not as not as many. I thought I saw him in other stuff before, but apparently yeah. I haven't. Oh, man, one of my favorite characters, Kimo Lima Lama. <laughs> was played by Sidney <laughs> Lufau. Chad Stelheski played Max Omega. Uh, Eric Paulson played Stelio. Scott McElroy played Bruce Burley. J.J. Perry played J.J. Tucker, hmm. which is uh, pretty funny because, like, if you look at his IMDb photo, he looks the exact same. He looks like he would love oh, himself yeah. at a uh, <laughs> Blink-182 concert. <laughs> uh, Brad Martin played Sparks. Brad Martin looks like he's a coach here. I mean, look at this photo. It looks like he's a football coach. Doesn't <laughs> yeah, it? Yeah, it totally does. I'm uh, like trying to wonder. Is like, oh, is he a football coach? And Jahi J.J. Zuri played Iandi. Iandi. So the, the, the cast, there's not a lot of cast to this. Um, no, it was a much smaller tournament. Uh, yeah, man, very much so. I already spent way too much time. <laughs> way too much time. Oh, uh, man. So, okay, getting into this. I don't think... Well, I do have a lot of notes, actually. Ooh, this is going to be a long episode. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Try to get through don't, this. Don't sell it like it's a good thing. It is, guys. This <laughs> is a, is a, this oh, a jam-packed jam- episode up ahead. Yeah, I like the way you think, man. Always Thank positive. <laughs> and actually, which is not bad, because I think we both agreed before we walked in that we, we really liked this film. Yes. So, anyway. Getting a recap of what happened in Bloodsport 2 during the opening credits here. It's a nightmare. Uh, there's a P- some PTSD going on from the <laughs> Kumite here. Daniel gets up, sees Jason. His son is up as well. He finds out his son got suspended from school for one week. His son claims he did it for self-defense when three kids tried beating him up. I was like, nice. Hell yeah. There's one kid. He beat up the one kid, and then two of his buddies came at him, and he beat those guys up. His dad's like, I told you, I taught you martial arts, you know, almost kind of no treat, no surrender. Uh-huh. Like, we use it for self defense only. <laughs> uh, now he's talking to his son about the Kumite. His son had no clue that uh, Alex was the champion of the Kumite. Yeah, okay. Yep. <laughs> yeah, Dad, I know about this action packed no no contest, <laughs> like uh, yeah. no rules, blood fights. <laughs> you were the champion. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. <laughs> So it's time for a flashback. We're at a casino gambling. Ninjas break in and start beating people yes. up. And they all each of them had a different weapon. Like Yes. One had like a trench knife. One had a whip. Yeah. One man. had a whip. Yes, dude. So uh Daniel drops the line, that's not the way to place a bet. <laughs> are all bets in? And he spins the roulette wheel and then he beats up the guys. I'm like, why are ninjas trying to rob a casino? The ninjas break out of the glass windows and drive off in this car like a Volvo just sitting there, break out, jump into the Volvo, and drive away. Uh, Apparently, the ninjas got something important from a safe, and the guy wants Alex to get it back and not get the police involved. And then he's like, Alex, you owe us one. That's why. And so it's like, oh, okay, all right, whatever. So yeah, he owes him one, yeah. For whatever reason, Alex goes back to his room. Some guy slips a note under his door letting Alex know where the ninjas are located <laughs> yeah. at somehow. He storms the place, beats him up, and gets the diamonds back. We're even, okay? Alex starts flirting with some woman back at the bar. Music starts. She says she has to leave, and she goes sings for the band. And it sounds like karaoke or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. You could definitely tell she was singing at the uh, location. It wasn't yeah. overdubbed. No, it wasn't anything. overdubbed. Yeah. yeah, man, for real. Uh, the guy wants Alex to be his guest of honor at dinner. He's saying he might accept. He's still watching this lady sing. Next, we see some gang members are asking for money. Take it from the register at this poor gu- old guy's shop. It looks like it's kind of like an antique store. Alex shows them what's up by beating the crap out of the guys. And the... and. 
the uh, store owner was very realistic. He was like, thank you, but they're going to come back. And I was just like, <laughs> don't worry about it. So now we're back at this fancy house. That woman is there. He's talking to this rich guy who is John Reese davies and uh, he wants Alex to fight for him. The redhead is the daughter of Duvalier. They sit down, watch some big giant dude fight some martial artists and just toss <laughs> them around. You will fight for me, Alex. No. <laughs> I do not take no for an answer. Uh-oh, wrong choice, yep. Alex. Naughty, he gets naughty. Away. He's going to sick his Kazakhstani war criminal fighter on yeah, you. Yeah, man. So Duvalier is trying to make Alex understand that he needs him to fight for him. He's like, I'm going to find his weak spot. And then Alex says, my one weak spot is my teacher. Like he's telling his son this. <laughs> so we get back. We, we're back and forth uh, while Alex is telling the story. It's almost like Blood Sport 2 in it's a way. Exactly, yeah, where it's uh, going back in the form of a uh, yeah, montage, yes, a flashback. Yeah, flashbacks galore. And his son's, you know, he's teaching him life lessons during all this while he's making his son squat with hot water, little teacups of hot water <laughs> on his lap. And I was just like, oh, my gosh, that's ridiculous. Good parenting. Yep. Master Soon is back. He's reading a book while we see Dynamite is hidden under the table. The phone starts to ring. Alex goes to visit. The The bellhop at the bottom tells Alex Soon hit some visitors earlier that look just like Alex. And Alex is like, <gasps> and races no! upstairs. No, <laughs> white guys that look like me. No. He ran up the stairs for a good 30, 45 seconds. They looked like they were in like. India or Indonesia yeah, or something. Yeah, it uh, takes place in... That's what I said. I was like, this isn't Southeast Asia. It's, But yeah, it takes... The Kumite in this one is in India. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, I didn't catch that. I was going to ask you. I which... think I just read the IMDb or something. Oh, okay, sweet. I was pretty drunk when I watched it, so I might have, <laughs> might have just... Ah, you you, you made India, it up. Yeah. That's India. That's plainly India. You actually used the iron hand to figure yep. that out, I bet. So... <laughs> Swept my hand over my... <laughs> Your TV. <yep. laughs> you didn't break it this time. You're like, oh, okay. <laughs> so he, Alex raises up the stairs, but soon picks up the phone just before and it explodes. <laughs> He's dead. <laughs> it was my friendship that killed him. And uh, then we get like this kind of uh, flashback within the story where Soon's talking to Alex and somehow he knows how to heal him. Alex gets a cut like on his arm yeah. and he uses the iron hand. He goes, the iron hand is good not only as a weapon, but for healing too. <laughs> uh, then we see that the poor guy that had the shop, he's, he's leaving. He's packing up. He says he's been forced out. He has all his stuff on top of the truck and then he gets in and takes off after saying bye to Alex. It's like, man, the poor luck Alex is having. Yeah. His his you know, his adoptive father gets killed. His buddy that he made at the shop is out of business now. Because of him. Yep, because of him. And then we see Pat Morita. He's back. Yep. He's doing okay still. Yeah, he's still doing okay. I'm glad glad for him. Mm -hmm. He helps out Alex with the name and uh when I was like listening, I was like, Did he just say Josh? Like <laughs> it's like, why that name? He's like, Oh yeah, from the Kumite. So Alex finds himself on a train, then in the country, then he gets a lift from a dude on a cart with two steers. He moves out of the way of an elephant, walks across <laughs> a small waterfall, avoids a snake in a tree, makes his way through what looks like a tea <laughs> patch, and finds himself at an old village house. He's looking for Master Mokado. He lets him know that Soon is dead, and uh, Mokado is like, I'll talk with you over tea. He tells the master about the guy, Duvalier, and the Kumite. We find out that Mikado is Soon's brother. Which, uh, like, one's named Soon and one's named, like, Mikado. Yeah, like, man, yeah. They look to, like, totally different ethnicities. Yep. And their accents are very are different. different. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know. Well, I think the And they're in India. <laughs> he might have got adopted somehow. It's true. So, well, well who There's knows? There's a lot of mishmashing, you know. Oh, like, it's all oriental. It, that's yeah, fine. that's exactly. Yeah, that's exactly it's very it. theatrical. I, uh, yeah. I bet you if we read the script, it was like, this oriental dude. <laughs> it's like, oh, geez. That's, oh, this was the 90s when this came out. Yeah. It looks like it's in the 80s still. So, Mikado tells him to be aware of his surroundings, and then a snake comes up and he starts petting it. <laughs> Then we get him training him all night. This new Kumite is going to be crazy. Listen to the voice inside of you. And he's like, we're going to train with the bow and arrow. Where's the target? You are the target. <laughs> and then shoots at him. He's like, whoa. It's, like, it's not even like, you know, a bamboo bow and arrow. It's like a compound it, modern it is, day fire is, class. Yeah. Bow and arrow. Where it ends up in this village that's, you know, you have to get to on carts and <laughs> walk through tea patches. So then they sit down for dinner in which uh, Mikado tells them, you think with your head too much. You must think with your soul. 
Uh, and Alex doesn't like the soup that he's slurping. And so there was a must be chicken soup for the soul joke right there. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, force is not power. Power has to come from inside. He's ta- teaching his son this. Now we're back to his son while his son's like kicking stuff and punching this, these, uh, poles with, uh, cushioning wrapped around him. He then did box the pole his son was working <laughs> on, blows it out from the other side. And then we see Alex being stretched by cows. Uh, his arms a, are not, being stretched. It's not a blood sport movie until something like that's going on. Yep, exactly. Uh, we get some more bow and arrow shooting, some more training. This time, be the arrow, and he catches it. <laughs> so all he had to do is be the arrow. Yeah, it's that easy. He's got a nighttime soak going on, kind of like No Retreat, No Surrender, mm-hmm. what, uh, four right there? Was that King was of the Kickboxers? Four? Yeah, yep, yep. Uh, which uh, the master's niece wants to help him with the bath. She undresses. We didn't get any nudity in this film. They pulled up no. on it. And uh, he ends up getting out and dresses himself and puts a towel on her. And he's like, <laughs> it's not you. The next day they're talking. He's just like, you know, soon was like a father to me. And since that's his brother, and he would be considered my uncle and you would be my cousin. And so it's weird. Yeah. And that's, 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 that's how That's the that. logic. Yeah. yeah. Lady, please. All, all, you know, he goes through all this just to say that I'm not interested. Yeah. You know, he could just say I'm not interested. Yeah, he could just, yeah, he could just say, uh, you know, I'm racist. I don't date people outside gonna, my race. I was going to say, he could easily have said that. because see I see mean, it on he... Tinder all the time. Yeah. <laughs> oh, how unfortunately true that is. <laughs> true. I always like, why not just not reply yeah. instead of just yeah, being like, if being, you're black, yeah. don't message me. Yeah. <laughs> like, Jesus Christ. Yeah, man. I guess, I, I guess, you know. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. <laughs> at, least, at least they're being honest. Very awkward. Yeah. Very awkward. Nothing racist, I just don't. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Nothing racist, but please. Well, hey, you guys look gross to me. <laughs> yeah. Uh. <laughs> so these guys surround them in the woods while they're talking. Alex takes them out easy. We get a lot of bars. Yes. Which I absolutely loved. Uh, Master Mikado tells him to sharpen your reflexes, and then there's a king cobra right there. And so he's he's <laughs> he's doing training. like weird snake kung fu around yeah, it. And... Yeah, yeah, <laughs> trying to hypnotize it. We get more training montage. We get the splits. Yes, uh, an arrow arrow is being caught, hypnotizing a cobra. The blindfold catch. It's all good. He's just he's ready, man. Hell yeah. Uh, Duvalier is with the big giant, aka the Beast. Alex still hasn't shown up to the Kuante. Looks like the Beast will be the ultimate warrior. Alex leaves the village, waves in the distance, then makes his trek through the leaves on an elephant this time and into the city. He's his place is trashed when he gets back, and a picture of soon is broken. Duvalier, and this is when I find like I realized I was like, oh, that's Gimli. Oh no way. <laughs> We see that it's Duvalier's henchmen, basically, were the ones that did it. We are now in an opium den, for whatever reason. Alex yes. comes up behind a dude, chokes, starts choking him. The guy flips him over. They fight. Alex speeds him up. This is for soon! <laughs> and then that's it. That's the end of that. That was, was that the guy who was shaking down his friend for money earlier in the movie? Oh, I, maybe. I didn't catch it. I didn't I didn't really catch it. I thought it was just kind of funny that he was like, beat him up, that's for soon, and then leaves. <laughs> that's it. There He gets his vengeance. Yeah, they really have all the uh, Asian tropes in this. There's an opium den. Yeah, dude, yeah. Cobra hypnotist, hypnosis. There's yeah. Ancient master teaching ancient secrets. And, oh, yeah. The, yeah, it totally it totally is a 90s like, movie trying yeah, to like they, liter- they literally just cover all the bases. And it's in India, which is even more strange. I guess yeah. they... It was easy to get the rights to film there. Who knows? I was just going to say it must have been cheap to film. And they maybe it, was a, cool, it was a cool things. setting. It was, dude. It was. It really was. I agree with you. So we uh, see the start of the Kumite. First, it's Beast versus Camacho Supe for the first round. Beast easily takes the dude out. <laughs> I mean, smokes him. Yeah. He he's kind of has like a pro wrestler style. He yeah, has, he, do, he, he definitely has like has lariats a and yeah. Yeah, it's like, a, it's like the pro wrestler in... Uh, uh, not was it? What's the Streets of Rage fighting game? It's um, not Streets of Rage like itself, but it wasn't there a fighting game kind of before Streets of Rage, Fist, Fist of Rage, or something like that? I don't know. Was it I for the Genesis remember. or the Super I, Nintendo? I think Super Nintendo. Saturday Night Slam Masters? No. There's a uh, there's a uh, anyway. I'm probably like there's <laughs> there's people yelling. Oh, at us Street right Fighter! Now. Street Fighter! That's it! <laughs> <laughs> oh no, Mortal Kombat! No. <laughs> Now I'm thinking, what was the one with the realistic looking, the stop motion fighters? 
Pit, Pit Fighter, I think, was it? Yes, Pit Fighter. That, that was, game that was, was trash. Bad that was the bad one. <laughs> so uh, next uh, we have Lima Lama versus Soon Han. Uh, and these are legitimately the real names for these uh, characters. It was a good fight back and forth. I don't know which guy won, but I was hoping that it was Lima Lama. And Lima Lama was my favorite. Showboating. He was showboating. He was the yeah, one who I'm won. the best. Yeah. I'm the best. And uh, he was amazing. And it was Lima Lama. <laughs> we saw that it looked like ninjas are going to invade the Kumite. Daniel grabs one from behind and then steals his outfit. Next up, we have Sarath versus Max Omega. And I go, hey, it looks like we know where Kenny Omega got his name at. <laughs> Alex unveils himself, and the crowd goes wild. And he does it during their match. Yep. How how rude is that, that to is do it during rude. someone else's match? Uh, Omega gets the win. Next is Pauly versus J.J. Tucker. J.J. takes him out easily. He then pushes Alex to the side as he climbs into the bleachers <laughs> to sit down. Next, for whatever reason, uh, Alex just gets there. It's him versus Chai. Guess who wins? <laughs> uh, Chai. Oh, Actually, now I ruined the, <laughs> I ruined my joke after that, so oops. Next is Stelio versus Sparks. There's a lot of white guys in this tournament. There are. I noticed that, too. It's weird. It's a bunch of white people fighting in India for yeah. a Japanese martial arts tournament. <laughs> yes, yes. Very much so. Stelio is like a Sambo kind of combination, dude. Yeah. Uh, he was winning. He yells at Alex and says, you're next. So I was very excited about that. We got mm-hmm. a little Chong Lee kind of homage to him there. Then he kicks the poor dude in the nuts after he yeah. says it. <laughs> he just still, like drags his foot over yep, just, right yeah, to that, his ball sack he as he's walking do. away. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Kick and drag right over his dick. <laughs> Next, we get Alex versus J.J. Tucker. Alex loses, but he puts up a good fight. That ends the movie. Yep. It's done. <laughs> See, there was my joke, so I ruined it. He could cut it to where it... Uh... No, it's too late now. You're right. It's too late. Far too late. So the uh, Alex obviously wins. The Sambo guy kind of nods in approval, but also <laughs> has like this look on his face like, oh, man, I bargained. I got myself in a much more of a bargain than I wanted. Yeah. The choreography, the fight choreography in this movie is pretty good, too. It is, man. Yeah. Yeah, they did a I good enjoy job. I enjoy it. Like, it. everyone has contrasting styles. Like, someone will do more takedowns. Yeah. Someone will do more bizarre exhibitionist flippy stuff. Uh, right. And... Yeah. Yeah. Some Young Bucks stuff. Yeah. <laughs> 50 super kids. <laughs> so, yeah, just... <laughs> <laughs> super kick after super kick. So we're back uh, with him with his son, teaching him life lessons as they camp and train. He also starts a fire with the iron hand. <laughs> uh, absolutely insane. Next, we have Max Omega versus Chun Lin. They fight while a fight goes on on the outside in the crowd. It's almost like an old UFC or WCW uh, moment yeah. where the fans are fighting. They both get distracted, but then Omega cheap shots Lin and wins. <laughs> Like, he kind of, like, taps him on the shoulder, like, hey, what's going on out there? And then just punches him when he looks. <laughs> Next up, we get Alex versus Stelio. You're dead. Come on. <laughs> uh, the Sambo dude is doing pretty decent, but Alex gets the upper hand. He bites Alex on the leg to let him go while he's in an armbar. Alex judo throws him and chokes him out. Up next, we get Iendi versus Bruce Burley. Bruce Burley is the Australian dude who says something to Alex before he gets up there. That was basically something like, yeah, I'm going to get you next or something. Yeah, something like that. It, it was weird. I couldn't actually understand yeah, it. What was up with that guy? I don't know. <laughs> because he offers to shake hands with IND and then he cheap shots him. Yep. So like, he's the first. I'm sure someone uh, during MMA saw this and was like, that's actually a really good idea. Because <laughs> usually in the first round of MMA, people touch gloves uh-huh. like before they start the fight. And uh, I've seen guys cheap shot guys while they do it, and they're pieces of shit. Yeah. Calling you out right now. Um, <laughs> no sportsmanship. Yeah, no man. honor. Yep. No honor. No sportsmanship. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> I all of a sudden was like, what the hell is going on? The yeah. Australian guy has a guy on the outside pull out a whip and throw it to him. Then he wraps it around Iendi. Yeah, and he uses it like a grapple. He, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't and, use the whip like you'd think. And no. the ref's like, oh, yeah, this is totally okay. Yeah, whatever. This is all right. I mean, you know. <laughs> but then Iendi gets the upper hand and he beats him. Yeah. It was so, so, like, the whole thing was entirely pointless. Yep. Totally pointless. <laughs> totally. It was so bizarre. I mean, it was funny. Oh, it was, yeah, it was, man. It totally was. It the Foley work. They, they really accentuated the Foley work in this yeah, movie. They did. Yeah, they did, man. <laughs> <laughs> those fully artists better got paid man <laughs> next up we get alex versus omega 
Alex wins. Yeah, it was good. And, you know, he just warmed down until yeah. he, yeah. Yeah. There was a back and forth. Until... A lot of, I was just going to say, there's there was a lot of good back and forth, and I, but I just did not want to keep putting that down in my notes. Good yeah. back and forth. Good back and forth. <laughs> good back and forth. Yeah. Even like, like I don't, except for the preliminary fight with the Beast, there really wasn't a, a one-sided there, yeah, fight. Yeah, there wasn't much of one-sidedness. Yeah. You're right. It's next up, speaking of the Beast, the Beast versus Lima Lama. And yeah, he actually did better than you would expect. Yeah. Like, he took him down. Yeah, he did. He did. The Beast smoked Lima from behind after he was showboating. <laughs> I'm the best. I'm the best. <laughs> uh, but then he just gets smoked. Like, yeah. When, once the Beast gets upper hand, he smokes him. He's not done yet, and he snaps Lima's neck. And uh, no one cared. Very sad. Yeah. No, no one cared that he killed him. It was just like, okay, whatever. Yeah. Next up, we get Ayindi versus Alex. And this is where I mentioned, why the hell does Alex have to fight 18 guys and the Beast only has to fight two? <laughs> what kind of tournament is this? I want to see the tournament set up here. Yeah. Alex wins, but once again, it's a good back and forth. Probably the best one out of all of them so far. Alex actually super punches him before I think really the super punch was even, Superman punch was even yeah. a thing. <laughs> uh, I thought that was kind of funny. Next, the final fight, Beast versus Alex Cardo. The beast is huge. I mean, Alex is a He's tall a guy. He's a big dude. He was beast like is even taller. He was like a head taller than him. Yeah, he was. The man. dude's got to be pushing seven feet. Yeah, he looked like it. Because Alex isn't he like six foot five or something like that? Yeah, dude. I well, we'll look at Daniel Bernhardt. Let's let's. I'm do pretty it sure quick. he was six foot five because he's he's tall. He is. And this Al- dude was like, yeah, he had a good head on him. So yeah, Alex he, Bernhardt is a tall dude. The other guy had to have been Alex at least. Bernhardt. I mix, mixed his name. Alex Cardo, <laughs> Daniel Bernhardt. The other dude had to have been at least like six eight, six nine, something in that range, at least seven foot eight. Oh, dude, yeah, he was he, nine he foot was jo- six. Yeah, if he, it was, he was <laughs> Goliath, actually. He was three cubits tall. <laughs> I really thought that uh, IMDb would have his height, but they don't. Well, what the fuck? I know. What, what, what's up with that? What's up with that? Hmm. Okay, let's see. Well, now I gotta like actually go on maybe Wikipedia. Just type in Alex Bernheit. Alex Bernheit, and they'll be like, what? Like, oh, <laughs> he's only listed as six foot two. That can't be right. Yeah, man. I don't know. He's st- He was still taller than a lot of those guys anyway, so yeah. maybe it is. Maybe he's six foot two. But... So anyway, um, the Beast is destroying Alex. He actually suplexes him. He legitimately yeah, suplexes him. Yeah, did a vertical him. suplex. Yeah, Alex looks done, but then those flashbacks to his training start firing him up. Something about that Cobra just does it. We get a bunch of back spinning uh, fist and spinning back kicks as well, and he takes the beast down, and he's actually out. Alex wins. Alex faces off against Duvalier, and that's it. He walks away. His son's like, and he's like, and do you know what I did with the big bad guy? His son's like, you walked away? He's like, that's right. <laughs> because killing the bad guy wouldn't bring back Master Soon? He's like, yes, and now you are ready. Ready for what? The children's kumite. <laughs> to begin. And then that ends it, and yep. we, they reuse the Bloodsport song. <laughs> Bloodsport! Bloodsport! <laughs> Kickboxing! Reused it. They reused it. I can't believe it. I started <laughs> laughing so hard. Yeah, I was like, is that the same song? <laughs> I was like, wow, wow. So yeah, they. I mean, remember to ignore the vast majority of this for the sequel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, they ignore a lot of things for the sequel, like common sense, <laughs> yeah. storytelling. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely crazy. Uh, but then again, this is where we get to our uh, split scale. Yes. On a scale of one to ten splits, what would you give it? You know, I really this is uh, actually I would have to say this is my favorite Bloodsport movie, other than you know the original, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd probably give it a solid eight. I thought it was a really enjoyable action romp. Yeah, man. Yeah, that's nice. Really good. You know, it had good choreography. The it was over the top silly. It had ninjas with whips. I mean. It's exactly oh, yeah, what yeah. I want in a cheesy action movie. Yeah, you're totally right there. All I, it was missing was uh, Jean-Claude Van Damme himself. I know, man. I know. I give it a 7.5. I'm, I'm close to you there. I, You know, I think uh, I, I definitely agree with you with everything uh, that was said. I The the reusing of Bloodsport really cracked <laughs> me up. The, it was uh, the, one, the one downside is the fact, like, I was like, so at what period did Master Soon teach these little kids and tell them about yeah, Bloodsport 2 was... between reading a book and dying of dynamite? <laughs> so he had enough time to grow like a, you know, an eight inch long beard, teach yeah. some kids. Yeah. So I, I don't know. I guess the kid, you know, uh, 
Alex Cardo's kid was 10. Yeah. So, so, so it had to be after some time, right? You know, I mean, maybe 20 years it had passed. Maybe. Uh, but then I again, mean, if we like lick Bloodsport 2 and Bloodsport 3 aren't far off in the filming of one another, they never gave a date on Bloodsport 2. That's true. And there could have been previous so, committees in between those two as well. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, there's wiggle room, but it just seems weird. Yeah, it's it does. definitely, uh, yeah. it's definitely fluky, but I guess it's possible. Oh yeah, but it still doesn't mean it's not a, not a good fun <laughs> movie to watch. Yeah, I mean, the fact that they brought back Pat Morita and yeah, uh, and brought in John Reese Davis. Yeah, that yeah, was man. super cool. Yeah. So the director of this was Alan Mraz, writer James Williams. The tagline, there's a tagline to this. The fight for justice and truth continues. <laughs> it's pretty good. Oh, this is awesome. So there's only one piece of trivia here, but it kind of talks about what we just talked about. Yeah. Judging by the age of Alex's son, this movie takes place around 2007. Oh. Like, okay, so. That makes sense, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, I guess so, right? There is no. There's no quotes. There's no quotes. No quotes. It's a shame. Master yeah. Mikado had some funny ones. Yeah, man. Yeah. I, he was good. He was no uh, low yeah. pan, but. All oh, right. Why didn't yeah. they just reuse him? Is what I was like. Did they not have enough money to get him in the movie? Maybe. I don't know. Who knows? Who knows? Anyway, that takes us into Bloodsport <laughs> 4, The Dark Kumite. <laughs> it's a uh, metaphorical and literal. It's a very, very yeah. dark, dimly lit film. Yep. Yep. All right, that wraps it up. Thank you all for listening. Jeff, thank you once again for coming in the studio with me to review stuff that we love. Oh, it's my pleasure. I, I don't have anything else to say, I don't think. It's all been said. All right, so we will catch you guys next week. Thank you for listening. I am John. And I am Jeff. And you have been listening to another episode of the Jean Pod Van Damcast. Now I'm going to show you what the Iron Hand is really used for. <laughs> Bend over. Oh, no. <laughs> the secret technique. <laughs>